Okay, John, I'm sure I'll be going to talk about what you did next in a minute, but you did tell me that you ultimately lost about 80% of seven figures that you invested in pitches in Ireland. Now, that's a hell of a chunk of a hell of a lot of money to have to sort of basically turn in because they de what they depreciated that much. Um, but you also said that your Cheltenham pitch was, uh, was a good one. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, how many other pitches did you have in the UK? Just, just the one. I had a half share in the pitch in in the entry with a guy. We he wanted to buy it, and I wanted to buy it. And um, he 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 said to me, "Will we buy it between us?" So I didn't want to upset anyone. So I said, "Yeah, we'll go, we'll go ahead. We'll do that." But he was a he was a different kind of an operator to me. He he, he only wanted to play figures and that. And we only did it for two years. No, we didn't do. We we might have won something in it, all right. But is 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 um. It didn't really suit me. And I'd say me being involved in, with him didn't really suit him either. Do you know what I mean? So it wasn't really a perfect partnership. So he decided, he said to me after two years, do you want it? Do you want it? And I said, it was on the rails in the entry. And do you know what? The business wasn't worth it to, for me to go. I didn't think it was worthwhile going to myself. So I didn't bother with it after. I said, you just said it. And we we got our money back and 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 and, and, and then that was it. So, but I, st I had Cheltenham for the bones of 17 or 18 years and it, it was a, it was my luckiest and best pitch actually it's very competitive in that ring though isn't it did you did you find that your punters found you if they came over would that sort of help where you were yeah look you'd, you'd have if, there wasn't there wasn't too many Irish bookies there and Look, if you if they knew you from home, that they, they, you'd probably bet with you. There was there's plenty of bookies to bet with in Cheltenham anyway. But I, I found that um, like top and Betfair and that you you could get away with that in Cheltenham. I, I, I probably a lot more than you could get away with in a normal day. You, you'd have no chance doing that like on, on a run of the mill meeting. But you, you know, just going to um, say eleven to ten a yoke that's two or six or two or eight that kind of stuff. You, you could get away with that little that 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 little thing whereas whereas um and, and taking on taking on taking your, your your whack out of it or whatever i mean I, I i i was lucky there i was i was probably lucky there in, in certain years as well and but i had good meetings in it you know what i mean i had real good meetings in it to be honest and but I, at the end even though i i was winning i knew i wasn't playing the correct way if you know what i'm saying it was like it was like a soccer team playing with four forwards. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? They had four up front. It, it, it was it was kamikaze stuff. And I knew some year it had to go wrong. And eventually it did. It, it, did, it went wrong one year. No, I was really, really unlucky the year it did go wrong. But saying that, I had good luck other years that I probably didn't even recognise, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I remember one year I watched... Cheltenham and they showed a replay at Christmas. You know, you're sitting down, you have nothing to do with showed Cheltenham the festival. And... It, Every horse of a second was a disaster for me. Do you know what I mean? That kind of way. But at the time, I didn't even realise it. Do you know what I mean? I was I was just saying, oh, we won there, we won there, we won there. But I, I didn't realise how close I was to losing losing me cobblers in, in almost every race. You know that kind of way. But one, the, the, finally, the, the year it, it, it went wrong for me. I said, the first year I lose here, I'm out of it because uh, it, 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 the, the, the extras were too big. The turnover was down. And I mean, uh, originally when we went to it, you went hoping hoping that you could win, like hoping that you could win a, a, a decent whack, or maybe even if, even if you lost, uh, even if you did a bad meeting, the X's didn't really matter. But at the end, the X's were too high a percentage of what you could win or lose. So for that reason, I decided to pack it in. Now, do, do you think that um, on-course bookmaking has, has reached the sort of, as bad as it's going to get, and then it's sort of bouncing back with some of the new faces coming into it. Um, look, as I say, I, I'm not that qualified to, to answer that question because I, I I don't know what it's really like. But I, I look at the crowds that go to and, and I see go to meetings, and there's nobody at them. I mean, if there's no hunters, you can't hold money properly. That's the way I look at it. Um, for me. The, I, I wouldn't like I, if I wouldn't take a pitch for for any for and loving their money nowadays anywhere. I just think they're a waste of time myself. But but other people seem to be. Able, but England is different to Ireland in so far as that there are days in England where the bookie is is a certainty to win. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you get thirty thousand people into York of a Saturday for John Smith's Magnet Cup Day or something like that, and you have handicaps that God wouldn't have bet in. 
you can but win. You know what I mean? If you play the figures and you play small money in 250s each way and fire each way, like it's like having a little corner shop, isn't it? You, like, if you play the, the those figures in in like there are meetings where they get big crowds of Saturdays and that festivals and things like that in England where you can't both win. But those days are fairly few and far between in Ireland. They don't have those days. So they may have had them one or two of them in Leperstone at the Dublin Racing Festival, where the place was 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 chock full of people. But like even Punchestown wasn't busy. Apparently, I didn't even go to Punchestown this year, but it it wasn't busy anyway. I don't think um, Galway is not as busy as it used to be. Um, like you don't get that many days like the Dublin Racing Festival. Like and and to to run a business. For the round of the year and go to all these places like personally bookmaking if you were making a book in ireland i would say you keep it to the, the real top meetings and you keep it if you can get your hands on a, a, a reasonable pitch the good one like you, you have to have a good one as well uh it wouldn't be for me now insofar as that the money that that, that they're that they're making still i would query whether they're worth it to be honest i i mean i think what, what you would you be better off putting your money into a fleet of taxis or something? I I don't know. There must be easier ways of making money. Like it's not every business that you could go and actually lose in a day either, is it? That's uh, true. True. So when you decided, you told your lads, "That's it, we're done." Yeah. Did you literally yeah. jump the fence and the very next day you were like a professional punter? Well, I was a professional punter all along, Simon, because I was betting every day of the week anyway. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. know, like the 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 bookmaking side of it was having less and less of 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 a, of, of an impact. On, on my overall picture anyway, basically. Do you know what I mean? So, like, like if we were going to, say, Tipperary of a Thursday, say, I could have more in the first favourite in, 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 in Ludlow going there than I could win in Tipperary for the day. That was always the case with the way I played. Do you know what I mean? Or, 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 or lay the first favourite in Ludlow, whatever it was, the case may be. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the bookmaking for me, like, there's very, very few bookies very very few made, made big big money like actually bookmaking they nearly always had something else like another string to their bow or whatever you know what i mean and i'd say overall if i ever made like what, what, what any kind of money i ever made i'd say a very small percentage of it came from bookmaking to be honest i would say the about the bulk of it came from actually punting horses and that that, that was basically you, you, you because you, you can you can win a lot of money in a day punting but you 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 can't win that much money on a day making a book I think because you, you can only win what you turn over. Do you know what I'm saying? So if, if a bookie goes to just say it's Ascot of a Saturday and he turns over twenty thousand for the day, right? That's all he can win. I mean that's that's laying no winner or no play starts or anything. That's that's what he can win. Whereas if a fellow goes to Ascot punting and he hits the seven winners in a row. Like he can win, he can win the clan die, can't he? Like you know what I mean? He, he he can win any kind of money. You know that kind of way. I always found that with punting. Um, that's you, you can win. You could you could have a big touch punting, but you could never have a big big touch. I can't ever remember winning an absolute fortune making a book of any day ever. But I can have I can remember having some really good days punting. You know what I mean? But it, a lot of the time it was the two combined. I could maybe win making a book, lose punting or vice versa or losing both winning both that was the way I operated every day of the week okay now you were you said before that you were getting some good connections you were getting some good a, a good card mark then did it open your eyes as to how hard it must be for anyone that's not well connected to win y yes yeah yeah I tell you a guy a, a man that, that taught me how to bet really was was Paddy Wilmot um I, I I always knew him. He was a, he'd be a bit slightly older than me, and he all but he was a clerk at the races, and he did all sorts of punted at a high level, a huge level actually. And I remember him saying to me one day, "Would you do? Will you put on a few bets for me? Do you know what I mean? And uh, can you get on?" And I said, "Yeah, we can get on. If fellas there can do the shops and that, like so." He, he started ringing me with bets, and it was a huge eye opener for me. It was, it was the difference between his stuff and my own stuff was stark. Do you know what I'm saying? And I was saying to myself, like, what I'm doing is a, is a load of rubbish compared to this. You know what I mean? This is this is proper stuff. Like, you know what I mean? These is this is this this man is back in horses at, at four to one going off eight to eleven. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And and you can get on these horses at the time. 
Whereas if I backed the horse at four to one and it went off eight to eleven, it was a pure accident. Do you know what I mean? It was it it it, 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 it was it was a fluke. And if, if we back one at four to one, it could go off six to one. Who knows? But but this guy, this man knew what he was doing and had an in whatever the word is an encyclopedia like like knowledge of horses. I've never met anyone in all my years that knows more about the game than this man anyway. I mean, and I still ring him to this day. And if he if if I fancy a horse and he doesn't. It would be enough for me not to back it. And yeah, I was no. told, I was told by somebody that was uh, in in with Paddy Power that every live bet, save for the Shannon River, was suspected as being Johnny Deneen. <laughs> uh, did you? I mean, how much of it in reality would have been? And did you have like a? Were you operating as a team, or was it just you? Oh no, I, I never go into shops myself. But but you'd have fellas that could, could put on for you at the time. And the shops were good. Like the shops were good. Um, fifteen years ago, or like th- that time, two thousand and six, seven, eight, when there was like when the, when it was real money swirling. I mean, you you could have any bet you like in the in the morning. Like you could have, you, you wouldn't need to have any bet at the races. I mean, you could back ten to one shots. You you could get on those. You get on favourites. I mean, I I could even I remember you could back horses at evens, go off four to one on that kind of stuff. Like you know what I mean? Um, but. All that died and all that stopped, and they the, they started cutting out those things, and the shops started closing in on, on on all that kind of stuff. So that's not really a stream. And and on top of that, the morning prices that time were will come out at half eight, and we used to be able to get at them. Uh, now they're out at six o'clock the night before, whatever. So that's fourteen and a half hours earlier. Then I can get, I can bet now. now they, they were out now, fourteen and a half hours earlier than I, than I can get at them. So basically, I'd see a horse two to one, maybe on on a, on a given night, and say that's a great price. But the thing is, if it's two to one at half eight in the morning, it's been there for fourteen hours and no one's backed it. So I'm now the only one that thinks two to one is a good price. So you, you kind of hoping that it's in. You're 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 half hoping that it's, the price is contracted, but not by too much. If you know what I'm saying. Because you'll find that if you're the only one, if you're in the one boat on your own, it's it's very often the wrong boat, you know, that kind of way. So uh, I'd often look at those kind of things and say, look, I'm not the only one that thinks two to one is a good price. I'll have to have a look at this race again and have a rethink maybe, you know. But the the price is like, I mean, I'd love to be able to get on the night before, like, but but but, but I can't. And, and it's very few people can't get on the night because that's where the, the real value lies. But that, those type of prices don't exist for me anyway anymore. I was speaking to a mutual friend of ours, Dean Valentine, and he told me that your second, your wicked sense of humour is second only to your knowledge of the sport. Now, is a, a sense of humour essential in this game? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you've got to be able to take the rough with the smooth. Uh, I mean, we used to have great cracks with my pals, and very often the best crack you'd have is when you get cleaned out. You know what I mean? Like you get into the car and we'd be saying like. Geez, I'm in some state now. You know what I mean? And everyone would be everyone in the car would probably be in the same kind of same position. You know what I mean? And that time there was a lot of credit going, and 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 you you, you like once you didn't abuse the credit, you were never beat. Then if you had a bit, of, if you had a chance, you always had a chance if you didn't abuse the credit. You, even if you had no money, and you, you came out of a meeting broke, if if you didn't abuse your credit, you, you always had a chance of getting going again. And that's another thing that's gone from the game as well. There's no credit anymore, and it's very very difficult to get going nowadays if you go. Whereas that time, if if you were skint, you had a chance because you, you you could bet with people, and and even if you lost, you'd say, look, I'll see you in a week's time or whatever, and that was kind of all understood, and and that, that, that everyone that was part of the game as such. Now that doesn't exist. So it, it, when we used to have great fun going around to stay in hotels and all that kind of stuff, and we'd be out all night, all that kind of stuff, and you know when young fellas doing that, but no, I wasn't much of a drinker, but I used to drink a bit that time, all right, but that that eventually I, I kind of half. Got rid of the drink part of it because not that it was what you drink or anyway, but 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 you you couldn't get out of bed, and if you couldn't get out of bed, you'd very often miss a price or something like that. And it's not what the drink was costing the night before; it's what would cost you the following day. That was the big thing for me. But like we always, but I often think to myself too. I you could be going to a meeting, and I could say to a friend of mine, "Do you know what? I need to win today because I'm I'm in I'm in bad state now. You know what I mean? I'm going desperate." And the next thing. A month later, you, you mightn't have won in between it. And you'd be saying, Do you know what? A month ago I wasn't going that bad at all. But I am in I am in some shit now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but that that was it. But we used to have great fun and and, and basically the, the 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 best of the days 
the, 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 the best crack we had would be when, when, when we'd be sideways coming out of a meet. Not so much that we won. Because if if we won, we would be all telling each other lies and saying, I didn't win that much. I didn't win that much. <laughs> Whereas if you lost, you'd be exaggerating. Oh, I'm gone. Because <laughs> you, you'd be always afraid to tell for how much you won, but you, you'd never be afraid to tell for how much you lost. <laughs> 